Hello and welcome to my channel, I am Puddles, and today we are going to do one of my encounters. Uh, I'm going to show you an encounter that I've run that I really, really enjoyed, uh, and we can just dissect it. Look at it, see what's good about it, see what's bad about it, what we might change for ourselves if we want to rerun it. Uh, but it's, it's part 25, so I thought for funsies we could just have a look at one of my encounters. Uh, and... Here it is. So this was a uh, just to give you the backstory of what this is all about. Uh, I had a mega dungeon. Each level corresponded with a different school of magic. Uh, this one is the conjuration. It's like the final battle in the conjuration dungeon. Uh, my players were I think like level eight or nine. It was getting later on in the dungeon. They're getting pretty powerful, pretty strong. So I thought I could throw this really cool encounter at them. And it went really well. I loved it. It was probably one of the most entertaining encounters I've ever run. It is quite mechanically complex for a DM to run, though. I'll just let you know that. Uh, for reasons we will get into shortly. So, the reason these guys are in here is to save this wizard at the top. So, we'll zoom in. We'll go to this guy. So, this wizard at the top is, like, encased in a magical shield, and the players have come to rescue him. Uh, they know to do that, they need to pull this lever, but this lever is also encased in a magical uh, shield. They know to stop the shield around the lever, they have to activate these buttons. There's four of them, these pink buttons. But each of the four buttons are also magically encased and they can't get to them. The players know that these blue buttons here are... Uh, will unlock the pink buttons. So if I zoom out, I can I can show you the the process the players will have to go through to uh, make it so that they can rescue this wizard. So first things first, these four blue buttons that I'm clicking on now that you should be able to see, they need to all be unlocked. And I, I had a skill check, like an intelligence skill check. Uh, I think I just did like an intelligence save, so it's technically not a skill check, to see if they could figure out how the mechanism works. So it wasn't an automatic thing. Uh, so they would they would have to do that. Once all four of these buttons have been activated, the pink would uh, disappear. I'll just do it to one of them so you see how I do it. Uh, you do that. And then they can activate the blue, the bigger blue buttons. Uh, and then once they've activated all four of them, the lever then is activatable and then they release the wizard. Now you might be wondering what all of these little circles on the ground are. Uh, they are teleportation circles. So to get from one side of the map to another, the players can walk onto the portal circle and appear on the other one. Now, I had a conjuration maze before this encounter, which was like a teleportation maze. So they would teleport from different rooms. It was also really fun and exciting. And I wanted to bring that into this combat as well to like have it sort of meld together. And so basically, if a player walks on the yellow circle, they get teleported to the other yellow circle with no movement needed. Uh, which is important because, as you can see, in the middle is a giant lava river uh, with our, our bad guys on it who are trying to stop the players. There's an Ifrit, uh, some salamanders, I think. I can't remember what they were. I think they're fire snakes. Yeah, there are some fire snakes and then there were some uh, methods. Uh, and they're just there to slow the players down. Like this encounter, the players could totally win without killing a single thing. Um, but, so that they need to use the teleportation circles to traverse and get past the lava. The last thing that happened with this was I mentioned that the room was like slowly tilting. Uh, and as it tilts, the lava pulls to one side. So a few rounds in, uh, I had the lava in like engulf the entire side of the map so anybody who was standing not like in this area would take lava damage which if you look in the dmg is insane it's like scary it everyone should avoid lava damage because it is a lot so we had and then the, the the like the tilting would like tilt back 
and the lava would go in the middle, and then it would start going this way. So the players had to think about where they were going to end their turn because the lava might end up where they were. Now, there were obviously safe places if they were on... Uh, I'll just draw with this. If they're on this this thing here, which is not really seeable, but I'm sure you can see that. If they're, if they're on either of these platforms here, they're fine. If they're on this platform, they're okay. If they're on this platform, they're okay. If they're on this platform, they're okay. You see, you see the gist I'm getting? But if they are standing anywhere in the uh, in this area, they are in trouble. The lava is going to get them. And they need to like get from side to side and, and flick all of these switches. So it was the dynamics of the terrain, the, the moving lava, the fact that the player's goal was not to kill creatures, it was to activate all of these switches to save this guy. Really, it made it for a really, really fun encounter. Um, it, uh, in terms of what I might change in the future, um, I might have moved the, I basically, when I put the, the teleportation circles on the map, I just did it randomly. In future, I might think a little bit more about like strategic value. Basically, it was very easy for the players to get from one side to the other, which is good because obviously there's lava happening. Um, so I might have changed the positioning of that kind of stuff. Uh, in terms of like what the creatures did, they you were like hiding in the lava for most of the time. So like a method would cast heat metal on someone's armor and then hide under the lava so no one could touch him, uh, which was a really cool combat maneuver from the method. So he would he would essentially keep casting this spell no matter what, which was really bad for the paladin who was wearing like a plate armor. But um, yeah, it was it was just. A nice fun dynamic encounter that had different levels uh, the players were running around there was a lot of movement in this one whereas unique like what was unique about this fight was that the creatures that they were fighting they were staying in the lava so none of the creatures that they fought moved really but the players were moving around a lot and it ended up that the the super fast like the rogue and uh, I think the bard as well, they were going around f like hitting all of these switches because they had the intelligence to make the save. They were obviously mobile, whereas the, the ranger in the back, he was uh, like shooting, trying to stop these creatures from hitting his friends. Um, the paladin was, I, they, some of them had like uh, teleportation abilities anyway, like Misty Step. They were they were using those abilities not in the fight, but in trying to solve the puzzle, which I think melding puzzles and encounters together is a really, really important thing to do uh, to make it challenging. Like, you don't have to do it in every encounter, but it does make certain encounters a lot more fun. Um, so yeah, it was it was a really, really fun encounter. Uh, I It's probably my favorite encounter that I've ever done. It was kind of a lot to remember in the moment though uh i mean i suppose all i had to remember was like the tilting which wasn't that bad it was just a layer action essentially and all of the things that i'm talking about in this encounter i'm going to go over in future videos like i'll talk about layer encounters i'll talk about terrain that is interactive like this i'll talk about making puzzles and encounters synergize um but yeah i just as my 25th video i just wanted to show you guys an encounter that I ran that was a whole bunch of fun and sort of just talk about it for 10 minutes or so. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I need to think about. I also, actually I did say that the, so we had a barbarian in the party, I did say that the Ifriti had a an axe and he was obviously an axe welder. So the barbarian, he sort of had like a second goal of killing the Ifrit because he wanted the axe, so he almost died because he got too close to the lava. Um, so another thing is having players have different goals, like four of the players, they just wanted to get in and get out, whereas one player, he wanted that axe. So he he was not necessarily doing, uh, he was not necessarily solving the puzzle, he was going for the kill, you know? So that was also another interesting dynamic that uh, played into this encounter, which was pretty fun. 
But I can't really think of anything else to go over right now. Uh, if you have any questions about this, just uh, put it in the comments. I can totally give anyone tips on how to make this, or if you use Roll20, perhaps I could give you access to this map. Uh, I'll have to figure out how to do that. But yeah, it was so much fun, and I just wanted to share it with everybody. So thanks. <laughs>